Hi, how you doing? Um, so tell them we're here to talk about uh, Provis, and you're probably all thinking, what is a Provis? Um, we'll get to that. So uh, just, we'll, we'll introduce ourselves, presenters. Can you introduce yourself? All right, um, I'm Danita Bowman. I um, live in Virginia, and um, I'm working with ProMet Source right now. I, I do. I run the training program. We have a, um, a paid training program that anybody pub public can join. And I also spend a uh, majority of my time as a sales engineer, so I'm estimating all, all the projects. I'm Steve Zipfel. Um, I'm the director of technology at uh, Promet Source. Um, I've been building with Drupal since 2009, and uh, yeah, I'm really like motorcycles and uh, like playing guitar. And obviously, I have no hobbies because I didn't put anything on mine. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, Promet Source is based in Chicago. Um, we are a fully remote com uh, company based in Chicago. And we, we specialize, uh, if you want to specialize in anything, we do a lot of local government, counties, um, cities, um, some, I guess I took a mask off, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, higher education, community colleges. Uh, that's kind of our, I guess, niche. So uh, with, with that, as, as, you, as we'll see, we've kind of leveraged that and that's why we've developed Provis is because we have these kind of verticals that we work with all the time. So our um, agenda today, what we want to do is just kind of tell you a little bit about what is Provis. Um, we're going to install it to show you how quickly it installs and what it comes with it. Um, you know, how to create some landing pages. This is a, a layout builder blocks um, mashup, so uh, with components on top of that to, for the styling. Uh, we'll talk about the upgrading path, what we're doing, um, you know, some, some theming, and then what our roadmap is. Um, as Steve will mention, um, Provis is a, uh, an open source, open source project. We have it listed on Drupal.org as a project, so it can be downloaded. You can. Uh, can use it. It's, it we're, we're developing it so that it can be used by anybody who wants to start a, a quick site. So I guess uh, next topic is what is Provis? So we get to we get to that. So uh, basically, w what Provis was is uh, it was born out of you know agency work. We had. So many RFPs, so many jobs, and we're always creating the same content types, a lot of the same views, a lot of the same text lines, that kind of stuff. Um, and so we, we thought, well, everyone wants a uh, night calendar. So we packaged it up in the, in the distribution as a Kickstarter. And then we added in a bunch of web components, and things like that, so that uh, you could just kind of go in, go to Layer Builder, and start just kind of creating really robust pages out of the box with, with a theme. We've, uh, yeah, basically, you see here content types. We've, we've kind of went back and looked at the ones, news, like I said, events, uh, FAQs, things like that. People is one, because we've come across, you know, the board of directors and the faculty, you know, those lists often. And we've tried to make them as unopinionated as possible. So news really is very limited. It has a, a title, a body, and an image. Well, you know, most of the time you need more than that, but that's a good starting point, so you're not pulling things back out after you've installed it. We kind of go with that. The site components, we have some pre-designed web components. They're all based on, on, a, on Bootstrap, so cards, carousel, and things that are already themed and designed within the, the, the theme that comes with Provis. It allows, you to, uh, allows you to kind of create a landing page and then start adding those you know, large hero image and four card sliders, carousels, and, and sort of things. So if you want to have all that. We have events calendar that's built on full calendar. We've actually uh, provided some accessible uh, fixes that were pushed back in, so it's, it's more accessible uh, out of the box now. Uh, it's a composer project, so it's easy to maintain. You can just composer, create a project, and spin it up. It comes with a theme that's based on Bootstrap. And it's just a So 
and it makes it really easy to install and maintain if, you, if you've worked with Drupal, you've worked with Pros. So like, uh, like Steve said, we, we, um, we did add some content types into the, uh, the distribution, into the package, uh, because like I said, we identified that those were the things that almost every site asked for. Um, however, as we'll see when we, when we do an installation of it uh, a little bit later, we don't say you have to have a news, you don't have to have a person. Um, you're able to select that at the beginning of your site. And if you don't want them, they're not installed. <coughs> But if you want all of these different um, content types, they're already kind of prepackaged. Like I said, very unopinionated. We tried to uh, tried to keep it very simple, just to keep the minimal um, fields on on the content types. But the ability to expand those uh, to meet the needs, you know, the exact needs of your of your project. Um, you know, we have features and. Um, you know, it's not features as in the old features in, in D7 uh, time, uh, but we package them. You know, the events calendar, it's, it's a feature because it has, uh, you know, events that you can create that are then displayed on the calendar or are displayed in a, a list, uh, a views list or something. Um, site alerts, um, you know, we have a content type that's a site alert because a lot of our local government people and colleges, you know, they, need, they needed alert banners on their sites. Uh, so we pack, package that up. Um, the Provis theme is just the web components, com you know, on top of each of those blocks uh, to, to do the styling on them. Uh, so that's, that's kind of our Provis features. Like I said, we're, it's a very minimal um, installation as far as, you know, uh, what's included because we didn't want to, uh, as Steve will talk about in a minute, uh, this is Probus 2. Probus 1 is a little different. So. Um, so, yeah, we, it ships with, with these components, um, like Steve said, the, um, you know, the card style, the four card grid, um, a grid of four cards or, or multiple cards. Uh, the hero image is a large one like for your home page. Um, you can also choose to be a, a shorter one if for your interior pages. Um, there, there's a um, uh, couple of variations on cards. I mean, it's very, very typical type of components that you'll see everywhere. So yeah, wait, what about Probus 1? So this is, obviously we're here to talk about Probus 2. Uh, Probus 1, big red letters, so uh, it's also, we put this everywhere, so we'll always support it. Um, it was kind of born out of the same idea, um, mixed with, look what we just built. And it got packaged up and into something. Um, and, we, and it worked really well, but it didn't age really well. So six months down the road, it started to, to grow a lot of technical debt. And uh, we realized that uh, you know, it was something that, that you would you'd download and you'd spin up and it was tied to Travis, it was tied to Doxel, and you needed to use all those tools if you wanted to use uh, uh, Probus. And yeah, it just became really, really difficult to, to maintain, and so we thought, on hard, and learn some lessons, and what are those lessons? <laughs> Make less assumptions. Um, and to make it less complex out of the box. Uh, you know, we wanted to make sure that, uh, like we were saying, I'm going to probably repeat over and over again, it's not opinionated. Um, it's a really good Kickstarter for, you know, uh, agency work for the, the type we're talking about, the, the local, local governments and healthcare, higher ed, that kind of stuff. We've seen um, repeated requirements, so let's uh, start with the kind of a, the MVP on everything and then go it from there. Uh, yep, we switched to use a, a distro, allowed us to maintain the code, uh, allowed us to make it installable, uh, it allowed us to uh, to separate our features so that you didn't have to um, get this monolithic website installed and then start throwing things out, which was the one of the problems with the Probus 1. Um, and just uh, make it easier to, uh, to continue the community. I was supposed to say to contribute <laughs> to the community. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, we'll get to installing Probus. So, I mean, it's, 
it's probably going to look really familiar. And like I said, this we we do have this um, on Drupal.org, so you can you can download it and, and play with it, expand it, whatever you need to do. Um, and Steve, you need to go ahead and install. There you go. And yeah, find install, find bugs, tell us what's wrong. Yeah. File a ticket. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's just I think everyone's seen something similar to that. And uh, you know, we got a composer. Uh, package up packages, so we maintain that. We push updates out. Um, Probus, from an update standpoint, isn't it's supposed to, it's not really supposed to be something that you know we're going to be pushing a lot of updates to with features just because of the, the nature of it. But uh, you know, the installer has some custom code. There's a little bit of custom code in the module too. If a security issue arises, we can push that out and, and make it more available. And then we're going to use Doxel for this particular uh, uh, demo, just because uh, Doxel is what we standardize on at the uh, ProMed. Um, we do have some, some getting started docs that actually show installing Provis and, and Lando. And, I mean, it'll, it'll I'm a work. I'm a user, and I never do it by Doxel. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it works everywhere. And yeah, and that was that was one thing with Provis One was was it, you know we were tied. It was you had to do everything through Doxel, and and we just didn't feel like that was like a good choice if we were going to make it uh, available to anyone to be able to use and, and list it. Not only for uh, you know uh, even internally, we have some people that would prefer to use other things. Yeah, and then when the M1 map came out, there was a lot more issues with. Doxel running on this version of Docker desktop and one. So this allows you know anyone to use the tools that they're familiar with. And uh, this is just yeah as we go through uh, one of the installer items is that you, like I think Danita mentioned earlier, you can pick and choose what what, what you want to install and uh, and go ahead and the modules. So if you decide later that you didn't want something, you can uninstall it. If you didn't install something that you do want, you can install it just the normal way. So. Now for a demo. Yeah, that, that's the difference between, um, I think, doing it as a profile and doing it as we build it with modules is that, you know, profiles is a little bit harder to go back and change if you start over. If you decide you want a feature or you don't, or a, a color feature, if you don't want one of the packages, so one of the modules, you can just turn it off or turn it, turn it on if you want it. Let me make that bigger. I'm gonna put it to there in case I've already done that. <laughs> and then, yeah, just I think everyone's seen this before. Um, you know, nothing too crazy, but uh, it uh, um, it it we've set it up. Actually, I'll talk about how we set up Composer a little bit. So we set up Composer. We actually have a main Composer file that's in a subfolder. Um, we do it kind of like how Pantheon does it for their integrated Composer. We have a a main Composer file that. You shouldn't touch. That's the stuff that's that's Provis. And then there's one in your root where you want to start adding things. You can add it there, and it kind of keeps it nice and and, and clean for updates and whatnot. And this should let me take a second because it is supposed to be in a few minutes. There we go. And then. Talk a little bit later. Part of our roadmap down the road is to actually add more 
documentation to, um, you know, for using your own local development. Uh, I think we have, we have some with you down now. Um, some. Some documentation. Not for DDAP, we have, lo uh, we have uh, yeah, Lando and yeah. Doxel. Um, one of the other things we're going to be doing is uh, um, just kind of uh, making so our repos for uh, our CI public that ties into it. Um, but again, like, you can use whatever you want. It is Drupal. It's kind of a nice part. Someone getting towed. Back to the slides. All right, that's it. There it is. That's good. And there we go. So that's the install demo. So creating content. Alex, like so the the installation is just standard Drupal, you know, uh, setting up a, a Drupal site, um, with the exception of being able to choose all the the, the different. Um, you know, features or packages, modules that you want to install. Um, but once you install it, you do come up with a, um, you have a, uh, a site that is pretty, pretty, <coughs> pretty basic like they all are, um, but the, the information is there. Um, see what we've logged in here? Yeah. Demos were always great, aren't they? See it or not, but um, okay. uh, this is this is a typical page, but it's not a good one. Um, so this is pretty much it out of the box. Was uh, a little bit of content has been created. Um, no, no extra feeling or, or anything like that. Okay, so where is our page with the thing? Mm -hmm. Where those blocks there? Yeah. Are you looking for the computer? Yeah. That's right. I don't know if there's actually a link there. So I'm going to read this. So this is this is kind of a, a page that we we put in here with just some um, examples of some of the blocks, um, it, like the hero image. I mean, they're very typical things that you're going to see everywhere. Hero image um, followed by um, this one is you know just image on the right, text uh, kind of a card on the left, switching back and forth. Um, we have the accordion um, that's used a lot for FAQs that we see. Um, you know, file list where we've tied in with, with some um, um, views. Um, you know, our buttons are in there. We have this this um, 
feature of you know uh, statistics because we found that a lot of places like that particular feature uh, that 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 component that we added um, different styles of, of cards um, circle image on the top um, different button styles and um, Trying to see if there's anything else in here. Block quotes, um, you know, an events list instead of a calendar. Um, this is something that we've included. Um, and like I said, some of this, some of the styling is kind of opinionated, but he, all of that is easily changed. You know, in the in the theme, you can change your, um, you know, you can change some of the of the CSS to go with things to make them look a little different. Um, this is another kind of upcoming events list. Uh, we have a, a tab feature where it flips between the or a horizontal tab um, to be able to think. So this is just kind of an example of some of the um, of the components mm -hmm. that you can add in. Uh, this one has a background image. Uh, you can't see it here, but. Um, just a background image with some text on top of it. Um, I'm just going to look at a couple of these. If you look at the layout tab like you would normally do, um, it's pretty standard layout builder with sections with you know placing the blocks in there. Um, I'm trying to find out. You can configure the accordion. Um, you're not going to be able to see this very well. Choosing the, the heading level, um, the um, alignment, how you want it to show. Uh, there's it, it very like it's very very typical um, standard Drupal layout builder look. We have added um, you know on our sidebar. I wish you could see this, but if you, the blue bar there on the right, it says create custom block. And that's where all of our custom block components are listed. Um, and you see there's, um, you know, an accordion. I'll, I'll try to read them off so you can see them. Accordion, a basic text block. Um, a button, just a standard button um, that you can choose which style of button it's going to be. Uh, your card, uh, a CTA, call to action, um, a divider line if you just want to put a line in between your content. Um, a files list, and the files list uh, allows you to choose um, uh, you know, any of your files uh, that are already in your system, you know, PDFs or something, because we see a lot of that. They want a list, but they don't they want to curate the list. They don't want a views list that just pulls everything in. So we have that files list available. Um, we have this thing called a group, and that um, it allows you to choose the display of um, a, a group of content. In this case, we could do a carousel of it, um, a four card featured, and a four card featured is one large. Um, say blog post on the left with a, a stack of three additional blog posts on the right or, or content. Um, grid, a grid of two, grid of three, grid of four. These are just some easy things for content editors to be able to pull in. Um, we can do the item display, um, you know, whether you want the image to be a circle, image to be on the left or right. Um, and then you can choose which content type you're working with. So in this case, I can choose um, blogs, the events, the landing page, all the things, any of the content types that we've added to the system. Um, <coughs> the person, um, you know, how many we're going to do, we can make it, you know, choose the number that we're doing. Obviously, if you're doing the, the four card feature of one blog, so you know, you're going to choose, there's going to be four, you're not going to have a lot of choice in there. Um, you can do the, the visibility, you know, choosing, like I said, who can see it, um, you know, is everyone or is it restricted to a, a, a role? And you can add the block. So like I said, we've just configured a lot of these um, with, with some options. 
And it, it's really one of those where you just go in and start playing with them and you can pull the things in. We do have a page that we show all of the different components. Um, um, let's see. This one is, um, you know, we have a, a media image, just nothing but media, the banners. Um, and that stat group one that I showed you a minute ago. Um, well, we can add the title and then we add a new custom block. I said it, it's one of our parts of our roadmap is to improve the UI, um, the, here to improve this look of the layout builder because we know it has some issues. Um, you know, just just making it more intuitive for the for the content editors. Um, when you start adding all the complexity and saying, you know, add multiple blocks in to the display, it just gets a little bit messy. Kind of like your um, paragraphs, you know, how you know, they're all nested in there and, and it, people get confused on them. So we're trying to make this a little bit better. Um, but anyway, just creating the custom blocks and add them and it adds it into the content. Um, anything else you wanted to show, Steve? Just like creating, like people start with a writing page just from scratch or something. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So what we'll do is just kind of start from scratch on a page. And, uh, oh, okay. Content. So another, we, we, uh, included a, uh, a content type called landing page. Um, you can obviously use the other on any page, but, um, we found that it, it spoke to our clients that they wanted to create a landing page, so we'd go there and do that. So, let's the layout. Here, I'm actually going. Let's do this. Custom block. Yeah, so I'm adding, uh, as as uh, was just showing, I'm adding a custom block, and I'm going to go find the large banner, which is you know, basically our hero. I'm just going to use something that we already have. I'm just going to use this one again. Pick my image. Insert. That's interesting. Is it just... Okay, let's try that again. That was, that was weird. Okay, I gotta refresh the page. And something happened. Docker die on me or something? Of course. Demoitis, yeah. I don't know what's going on there. Since we're here, I click that and save and install. I see if it doesn't if it moves along then I know it's not Docker, it's hmm. interesting. Sorry about this. Of course it's always a possible possible issue when you're doing a live demo. But uh, it's kind of strange. Okay. 
like anything else? Have you tried to do a live demo? Yeah, actually, never had this did happen. No, we didn't. Uh, no. We, we should have. We should have done something similar tonight. Yeah. Um, I said that uh, advantage of, of doing, the, you know, like I said, the way we've done it is we we've kind of simplified it so that um, you know almost anybody can pick this up and, and, and do it, except when it cracks out like that. But, um, uh, you know, you don't have to have, we, the first Probus 1 was, was tied, and it's not a bad thing, but it was tied to Storybook and uh, uh, a lot of, you know, there was a lot of other other technology you had to include in order to be able to use it. And um, that just increased the complexity for the developers that were, were working on it. By doing it the way we've done it now and kind of taking some of that out and simplifying it, it, it just, you know, for agency work, it, it worked really well because we could spin up a site pretty quickly um, and get started. Um, and then we could apply our custom theme to what we've already uh, added. We have you know, the basic components built, and almost any site is going to have <coughs> some of those same same components. They may look a little different. You may have rounded, you know, corners in the, on your cards or. Um, you know, you may add, you need to add a, a, a fancy element or something to your to your theme, but a lot of the a, 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 you know, hero image is a hero image. It just depends on where you put your overlay with your text or whatever. And all of those things can be changed uh, in the theming. All right, so Pantheon to the rescue. We have a site up on Pantheon that's, that's working, and it's even faster than the local, so... Um, so yeah, so I've just added uh, uh, the banner at the top, um, which is where my, my local, so I blame on my computer. Uh, the, uh, so right now I'm gonna do the kind of, um, we have cards, we have like, you know, the text on the right and the image on the left, except, and vice versa. And uh, you know, that'll, that'll show up one way. Um, the other option we, we find uh, is that you can control it a little bit more by using sections and setting you know, uh, the column widths and stuff like that. And, uh, and then just kind of you know, add text, um, the, the basic card, text. Or, the cards are, are card displays, the card component is, is really good if you're doing you know, like a news list of, of blog post or something like that. If, if you're doing one-off landing pages where they want, you know, an image on the right and text on the left, it's, it's almost easier to do it in a, uh, you know, two-column layout and, and add the text on one and the, the um, media on the other. Media on the other, uh, rather than use. I mean, you can use the card, but um, yeah. Then, if they want to change the image out, it's a little easier to change the image, change the text. You know, they don't have to go into the card and do it. They can just do it strictly on the text. Yeah, it creates a little bit more. So this this gives a bit more uh, flexibility to do the same thing. It depends what you're looking for. The card might be perfect. You might want to use a bunch of spots, or you might want to do something like, like this. So, um, so I just added those two, and uh, just see it out. And you know, right out of the out of the gate, we've got some some things working here. Yeah. All right. So. Any questions about? So on the components, um, they have larger images. How do you guys handle all the volume to the responsiveness? Do you use like um, a regular media content to have different displays depending on the breakpoints uh, on the thing or so? Yeah, so we're we're actually just because we're using Drupal, uh, Drupal three, um, well, it's Drupal, but uh, Bootstrap. Um, we're really kind of just kind of leveraging anything that comes with bootstrap, so the breakpoints oh, yeah. and, and all that sort of stuff. So yeah, it just kind yeah, of loses it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So um, on on the dependency management on, on, on the vector list, you guys have the also the bootstrap version on it. Um, yeah. So we we can. Um, so there's a question, do you mean like do we make it available like as updates come out or are we well, able to update? You have a really out of the box tool already in yeah. the field. Yeah. You can post here in Docs when yeah. you start. My question is, on that out of the box tool, 
using the back of his dependence of the um, on creating the project. Does that come with the update of Bootstrap every time Bootstrap gets updated? Uh, so it would, if there was some sort of security issue, mm -hmm. um, we would update ours. How you handle it after? So uh, you could either install it with, with Composer and then just kind of, you know, um, Composer update your particular package that you want, and you can mm -hmm. control it that way. And you know, Bootstrap's in there. So you could you can proactively do that kind of thing, or we would probably insert anything like like that. Our goal um, down the road is to make anything with a security, uh, anything that we put out that a security update becomes available for, will update ours. So right now it's Provis 2.0.4. So if there was a security issue for something that um, that uh, ships with Provis, then we would update. Not our, you know, it could be just updating our composer so that it pulls in the right one. Um, that's not. And the, and the difference is, um, you know, the, the distributions, you know, used to, I've uh, used distributions in the past, uh, and, and you would have to wait until yeah. the distribution updated before mm -hmm. or whatever, and, you know, you were behind. This is not a distribution, uh, it's a, a, a you yeah. know, Basically, once you, it's a quick starter. It's a quick starter. So once once you install it, then if you want to update core or if you want to update a module or whatever. But you were mentioning there's two composers on the project. Yeah. So w one of the ones was that uh, we just kind of want to make sure that that um, you know you can do whatever you want with it when you get it, and <laughs> but we wanted to make it so that you know certain certain packages were associated with it. So even just from our from our standpoint of, of maintaining it, um, when we start working on our own projects, we want to be able to go, okay, no, this is <laughs> this is part of the, the, the Brodus core. So when we're maintaining our like our client work and, and things like that, we have a, a separation between the two. Um, but yeah, there's no reason why you can't update it. Um, we'll have to put some docs around it because you would update it from in the uh, in the uh, the subfolder, the upstream configuration folder. And uh, and then once you update it, it actually starts putting in, you know, like it does composer things, right? So now you've got composer dot dot lock in there, and you've got a, you know, all of you know your vendor folder and thing. You don't you don't want them in there because it's actually just including that composer from the root. So you always want to run it from the root. But you'll end up. It's a bit of a a, a funny thing, but uh, it's. Uh, it's totally doable, and uh, you could choose to update, or we will update ours, and, and then you would do composer update, and it would pull in, you know, the latest, uh, uh, the latest Protus, and uh, one of the other items. Is, so it's not meant to. We're not going to be pushing out new features and things like that. Um, it's it, just because it's in the nature of it. A lot of it's config, so we don't want to, you know, force a config import and overwrite anything that we've changed. So it's really supposed to be a Kickstarter, but like I said, anything that comes out um, security-wise that, that you know falls under Provis at all, then we'll, we'll put a, a push something out. You would get new stuff, potentially um, new features, but they won't get installed unless you proactively go and install them. Because during the installer, or you know, if you uninstall something and you install it, then you would get any new, new features if there's any new any new config. That comes in because obviously we're gonna we're gonna keep updating it, but we're not gonna be forcing those updates to, to happen on live sites. The features does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, now that you're saying that, I'm wondering if you build this to work with pant and options. Uh, no, not no. <laughs> we. One of the early things we did was made it work with Pantheon upstream, and, and okay. so I used to work at Pantheon. And so I'm familiar with some of the separations, and uh, I like the idea. So, mm -hmm. so I just kind of, you know, use that architecture in our, uh, I think as well. Okay. It'll work there, but it'll work anywhere. Mm -hmm. You just have to, like, as long as you can write, run Composer from the root, it'll, it'll pull it in and do what it has to do. Any other questions? Awesome. So the installer is complete. Oh, oh actually, no. Did uh, I actually complete that? Yes, I did. Uh, oh, yeah, so the next one is just theming. Uh, I think Daniel touched on this. Um, you know, the, the thing we recommend is, is, again, actually this kind of speaks to what we were just talking about, is to create a sub-theme off of the Probus Bootstrap theme that's in there. And just that 
being re the reason for that is um, I don't think we have any any custom code in there at the moment. But if at some point there's custom code in the mod in the, in the in the theme that does anything, um, and we introduce a security issue, we want to be able to roll out and push a patch to that without affecting anything anyone's doing. Um, so just you know, typical best practices really. And uh, the uh, we can't read that at all. So on the side there, there's a an image of our uh, some of our one of our SAS files, and we have you know inside our scss slash global there's a variables file and the variables we have everything outlined and and uh, and uh, commented for changing things like uh, primary color secondary color um you know our border radius um, border colors so you can actually go in leave the theme the way it is kind of and then start adjusting it just through the css we can start changing um yeah you, know, you don't want any borders on on something you know that kind of thing so it's like High level changes, but uh, that allows you to kind of do it quite quickly. And, oh, we have a roadmap. So, we do have a bit of a roadmap, and we we're talking about um, one of the things we want to do is more, more components uh, and uh, installable demo content. So, um, just part of the, as part of the install, kind of like Imani, we want to be able to have it so that people can actually take it for a test drive um, and actually see content in it right out of the box. Um, we want to add a photo gallery. Um, we're putting together uh, a bit of a migration toolkit. Um, some of that's, you know, um, included, uh, you know, uh, required modules, some of its docs, and just kind of best practices around the migration with uh, Provis. Um, more robust theme configuration tools. So the stuff we just talked about that's that you have to go change in, in, in SAS files. We want to make that part of the theme so that it's a bit more configurable from the UI. Um, we want to add some extra themes. Um, we do have some demo sites that we're building that uh, hopefully will allow us to, to create some different themes that, uh, so we have some choice out of the box. Um, and I think to need to mention this, we have an initiative right now where we're trying to clean up that the, 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 the admin portion of layout builder um, you know there'll be probably some javascript some things to clean up some of those uh, you know nested forms for buttons and things like that so we can just make it a little more intuitive about user experience and uh, at some point uh, Drupal recipe integration so like you know how do we how, like that's coming so how do how do we work with that that may be Provis 3. I mean, you know, we, we kind of started down the road with Provis 1, kind of pivoted to Provis 2's um, you know, market you know, creation. And, and now that the um, uh, recipes initiative is, is happening, you know, we may we may actually find some things in there that we'd rather do it the way that you know, recipes are going. So, who knows? Um, but for right now, I mean, it's, it's a decent project, and it, 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 it and it's able to spin up a basic, you know, a basic site. It's, uh, you know, a site builder could pretty much pull a site together within a couple of hours. Um, I recently did that for a really small site. Just pulled, you know, throw this in, changed a few colors in the background, and they were like, "Whoa!" <laughs> you know, you have a website, you know, and it's not Wix. <laughs> and not, maybe not as maybe not as easy for them, but yeah. But it, it, it works well for you know one off things. But the main thing that we've done it for is is to, to be able to crank out some sites a little bit quicker, yeah, to get the kickstart so that we um, we don't have to start from scratch every time. Awesome. Well, it's, well, the other thing that's really nice about it is that uh, you know everyone on our team works with the same starting point, and you know so they they know. This is how we're doing calendar. This is how we're doing this. You know, there's obviously times. I mean, like any agency work that, you know, uh, someone's going to come in and they're going to have just one requirement that blows it all out of the water. Um, but we find that more often than not, this is actually a really, really good starting point for us to start with. And I mean, if anyone's interested in, um, you know, in the in it project, whatever, we're more than happy to, uh, you know, like 
it put an issue on Drupal.org and, and it made, you know, make a suggestion or a thought about how we could do something different. And uh, you know, we're going to continue to have it as an open source project that we offer to anyone who wants to download it. Send us a PR. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. So we got, uh, these are some links, uh, you know, uh, our the, the Drupal project page. Um, on the Drupal project page, uh, the, the getting started docs are right there. It's uh, kind of just a one of the first docs we've got out there. Uh, just kind of, uh, as you can tell, I think we've, we, we put our non-beta version up two weeks ago, maybe? So I think so. It's, uh, it's still, we've been using it for a while, but uh, we just got it on, uh, on just the, the 2.0 or 2.0.4 version up on Drupal.org. Uh, Not that long ago, so we're just catching up with uh, with docs. You know, packages repo there, and then the GitHub repo. And I think all of that is actually on our D.0 uh, project page for, for pros. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, should we, do we have time for any questions? Anyone have any questions before we shut it off? Any other? Uh, so what's, what's, what's the effort look like to sort of maintain this thing? I mean, you guys are probably doing new features stuff, and at the same time you're trying to figure everything out. Like, what kind of effort is it just to keep this running so you can use it to get it? It's actually not too bad because a lot of times what happens is we'll spin up a site, we have a new new client and, and we're, we're spin up with, with uh, Provis. And because that is one of the things that we found with Provis One is that software doesn't age well when it's not being used, right? Yeah. And uh, so we're, we're using it often uh, internally. So when we spin it up, we'll see, oh, you know, we've got to update this, blah, blah, push it out. We're also supporting a lot of our clients who are using it. Um, so. Um, we're honest yeah, I mean, the, like one of the things that on a recent project that we showed you the the calendar kind of list, the the, the the cards of calendar items, that was actually something that we put a client wanted that look and feel of their calendar, their events. We were able to pull that out of their site, kind of drop it back into Provis. Um, it wasn't something that we had initially in Provis. And so that's what we try to do is, is leverage, you know, as we're creating a site for clients, anything that we can pull back in to Provis and, and that we think is useful. That was kind of one of my questions, that you know, that thing is just going to keep growing, and the bigger it is, the more, more maintenance there is there, it becomes its own sort of project. You know? Yeah, yeah. So we, we're trying to keep it, yeah. we're trying to keep it still pretty light and like, like un, unopinionated. So if we do add features, they're going to be... The idea is that we're going to make them as, as lightweight as possible so that, you know, you don't have to start tearing things out to make it work for you. And that, that was the case with, with Provis One, um, like on the, um, the person, uh, staff, content type. It was very, like, we're talking about opinionated. I mean, it had everything on there. It had your email, your phone number, your department name, your uh, a, a, a reference field to taxonomy for, or... or um, you know, for department, um, you know, I mean, goodness, it had all, there There must have been 20 fields on that person thing. Yeah. And it's like, okay, so now we don't need that on this, so we need to go in and strip out all these these fields from it. So that's why we went this way with just adding a person basically as a name and a, a short a, bio or something, yeah. you know. I think there's a cup, couple of fields on, yeah. on, on person, like, I think we have email phone or something just because it's kind of normal, but we, like if they're not there, they don't get, but we don't have, you know, a uh, department or faculty, a member of, or, you know, things. You're kind of crazy with people, like yeah. honors and awards and this, that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, yeah, we, we definitely keep it, and, and, but you're, you're right, there, there are some things that we do encounter, and because we're using Provost, we try to say, okay, well, let's make this at a, as it, what we would put in Provis, and and then add it into the Provis itself, pull it into the client work, and then elaborate on it. Um, and we feel like we've got most of the things we want, but there are, like, like you saw the roadmap, there are a few other features. Um, and then the other thing we really want to kind of put out there is, is, is our, our CI recipe. It's, uh, um, well, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's with Travis, so, you know, 
it's opinionated in the sense that we, we set it up with Travis, but we, you know, we're gonna have a repo that you can just pull in and um, set some, some values in the environment file or something like that, and then you should be able to start using it um, however you want. And we're trying to set it up so that you would, you could, like it'll work with other hosting vendors just by changing your hosting environment variable and you'll push the right one to stuff. But uh, it's not ready for prime time. And, and that, that, that's, a, um, like Steve was saying, I, I think one of the good things about using it with client work and trying not to make it too bloated is that we don't, uh, we, we try to do the minimum project, minimum viable, you know, uh, project for Probus and then add on to that for client, um, you know, specific things for client work and not pull everything back into, into Probus. But, the, but being able to start, you know, and have everybody start from the same starting point because, you know, it's like, they know what modules, they know what features are going to be in there, what, you know, and then they can expand on it. How do you guys communicate those new features to all the people using that? Is there, like, new feature for the <laughs> Uh, no, actually, um, so I'm really at this point, it'll it'll be, uh, you know, probably a media release on LinkedIn, we'll probably update uh, um, our, our DDO project page, that kind of thing. Yeah, now that we have a, a, an actual release, it's probably we're in you know, beta and whatever we want. Yeah. yeah. But, yeah. Other questions? Push the button.